Um, Yeah, I can. Yeah, I think we should. Price is admitting. Um, uh, we just had a little bit of background noise, so if everyone can mute themselves, that would be great. Awesome. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I'm Ashley Carver. I'm the MSCP coordinator um, and your main contact for the multi sector renewal process. And with me is the stormwater program manager, Kevin Burke. Hi, everyone. And then the um, construction and industrial inspection supervisor, Tom Benoit. Hello, everybody. Um, just some general housekeeping reminders. If you could keep yourself muted, um, if you have a question or a comment, just raise your hand. And when you're called on, feel free to unmute. And you wish to turn your camera on when you're speaking. Um, go right ahead, go right ahead. And just as a reminder, we are recording the presentation and the meeting. So the agenda today, we're just going to go through the draft permit changes. We have a timeline, and then there's going to be a time for general questions following the timeline. And then at the end, there'll be an open floor for any public comments that you submit, and we will note them for the future. Um, anyone in house, the bathroom is right there if you need to use it. Um, and anyone online, just be sure to um, keep yourself muted until it's until you need to speak. So some of the changes are the information that's required on the NOI. Um, it's now going to a online form. I think a lot of people have likely used ANR online for submitting their annual inspection reports. Um, we're developing the NOI to be on that same platform, and that's where everybody will need to submit. And then there will be a revised SWIP that all facilities will need to utilize and submit with their renewal application. Along the same lines, the electronic reporting, so discharge monitoring reports and annual inspections are all, the annual inspection is already online. But the discharge monitoring report will be um, now strictly online, and that is also under development. All facilities will be required to submit both the NOI and the or their NOX, depending on the facility, online at the reissuance of the permit. Um, there were some revisions to benchmark limitations, and those were just minor and to align with EPA's general permit. So if you have a facility who requires you to monitor for those parameters, 
Um, there's more information on the fact sheet about the exact pages. And we had just an update to the effluent limits, just clarification on what's required of the permittees and what's required to be submitted to us. Um, we hope that it helps with uh, compliance and readability for our permittees. One change for inspections is the proposal is to move the annual inspection date, which is currently all annual inspections are due the 15th of each year. Um, the proposal is to move that to February 15th of each year, allowing for facilities to um, account for their entire calendar year. Um, and then submit by February 15th. There were some updates and clarification for corrective actions. We modified some deadlines to clearly identify the expectations of the facilities when a corrective action is needed to be reported in a better for that. Um, the SWIFT for facilities that are fully permitted under the notice of intent for the availability, it's going to be posted to the environmental notice bulletin at the time of application and then again at during the public comment period for a public review. At the change from the prior permits. And then discharges to impaired water monitoring. Previously, if you discharge to an impaired water, depending on if they had a CMDL or not, there were different requirements for monitoring. Those requirements have been removed. And unless you're notified directly by the secretary, there's no additional monitoring requirement for impaired water. Um, we updated what's called the additional implementation measures. It was an addition to benchmark monitoring, and that allows for benchmark monitoring exceedances to have different tiers of action items when the average of four quarters is above the um, above the allowable limit. Um, sites will be required to review their SWIFT and then continue to monitor and update any any BMP or good housekeeping that may be needed to complete to get a reading the next quarter that is below the threshold. And then in the fact sheet, again, there's just more information about the sector specific changes for sector A, which is timber products, G, metal mining, H, coal mining, J is mineral mining and dressings, X, air transportation, and then the new permit incorporates the addition of sector AB1, which is for anaerobic digesters for processing of organics. That is a new sector that in the previous permit was regulated but not added to the permit. So this solidifies that addition and um, it's just it's a new activity. So some of the next steps, the department will consider the public comments received during the public comment period. 
which will be open until July 12th. Comments can be submitted either during this meeting by you can email them to me or by the environmental notice bulletin. And then a response to comments will be prepared and will be included with the issuance of the final general permit. After that, facilities permitted both under the NOI and the NOX will have six months to apply for permit coverage under the reissued general permit. So we are now at the point where we, if anyone has any general or procedural questions, background questions in advance about public comment that they wish to ask, we have the floor open. Um, if you're online, just raise your hand and we can call on you. If there's anyone in the building that has a general question, feel free to ask it. So with the, with the new permit application, um, the permit station, will there be water testing? Yes. Okay, so the, is I starting from scratch with the water testing for four quarters? Correct. So the so right now some facilities likely tested out of their monitoring, meaning that they had four quarters that the average was below their um, benchmark. With each issuance of the new general permit, those requirements reset. And facilities will again be required to monitor for at least four quarters. And if those four quarters are below the threshold, then you no longer have to monitor for quarterly. If there's an annual limit, that is for the life of the program. Yeah. Can you bring it to the ball of the requirements in the diverse like there are? Be able to answer that. I see. I don't know them off the top of my head, but I do have them in effect. Yeah, for those, I don't know if everybody can hear the questions in the room, but um, he's asking for the sector specific changes for benchmark monitoring for sector A timber products. We're just going to quickly see if we can answer that. And, and just if, if I, I could can interrupt for just a quick, quick minute. minute. Um, if you do have a question or a comment, can you state who you are um, and, and where you're from? And that way I can, I'm trying to keep track of them for public comments. But uh, Lynn Gardner. Lynn Gardner, Clifford Lauber, and Energy Carter, and Clifton, and I'm George Lauber. Okay, thank you, sir. Sure, yeah. Thank you, the fact sheet. So, yeah, in the fact sheet, which it prints some extra copies if you would like one. For sector A, it, um, it says discharges resulted from uncontaminated spray down or intentional wetting of logs at wet deck storage areas is an allowable non stormwater discharge, provided the effluent limitation in part 8.7 is met. To accommodate situations where facilities use water from a water body, that operates intend to return operators intend to return to the water body following spraying or wetting. The permit contains an allowance or credit for pollutants originally in the water body prior to the use and discharge. I have read that. I think so. I mean, this is what's proposed in the draft permit. So unless unless we got comment to change that as it's drafted you know let's say we got a comment today that somebody wanted more stringent requirements and it was justified that we needed to make more greater requ greater requirements for a particular sector you know then we you know we would consider making those changes as part of finalizing the permit but right now the draft is as it stands unless we get some uh, some some other indication that we need to change it I so guess, this, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I, I guess, guess if, uh, Dave, well, I'm sorry, uh, Brett Gardner, Pike Industries, um, we have, um, 
a dozen or so uh, active MSG permits. Um, I guess if you could give us a, a little bit of an overview of what that NOI uh, permitting process is, is there going to be any engineering required or or testing in order for the um, application submittal process? How does that go? So you, um, with the multi-sector, you do not need an engineer to submit it. You're not required to. The questions are going to be similar to what are, what is already on it, just in a new format. There are going to be some extra questions pertaining to effluent limits if that applies to the site. Um, but otherwise, you should not need an engineer to do not wish to same one. Um, you do have to fill out the subscriber agreement and get that done before you can submit the application. There's the second part to your question. Okay. Yeah. I heard testing. I didn't know if you needed to do any 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 soil sampling or no the only thing that's required is 90, sites that have hardness dependent um parameters hmm. will have to tell us the hardness of their receiving water. Okay. Did you did you say as compared to 9050? Yes, yeah, and we have several of those as well, and it's a much more detailed process. Yeah, and that permit's you know is distinctive in that it's managing the runoff from the impervious surfaces, and you know when you're establishing treatment practices, like if you're if you're looking to infiltrate, we would need to know separation to groundwater types of soils that you're going to put the water through. Um, it's completely separate than multi sector. Okay. And do you need um, is the is the SWIP uh, part of the uh, initial NOI submittal? There'll be a place for the attachment to upload the slip in the site map and the location map, and then any other documents that you may wish to upload. Okay. And we're in the process of developing a fillable slip. Yeah. The fillable template. Yeah. And, that, and when I met with you actually the other day, my question was if uh, if that uh, fillable template may be available prior to the the um, official. Um, issuance of the permit uh should yes. we want to get a jump on it yes we are in the final stages of getting it ready and hope to have it online prior to the end of the public comment period and um so that facilities can look at it and start utilizing it prior to reapplication but we won't be accepting them until sure. the permit is actually reissued definitely that is our goal yes and then i guess my last question would be would there be ever an example where uh, a permit holder um would be justified to request for an extension of the six month compliance deadline would say no i mean we you know we've got various permit programs where there's often deadlines um somebody might miss one for whatever reason I mean, could have a flood, could have something that, you know, might impact your ability to comply. I think those are just case by case basis. Okay. Um, sure. But I think without knowing the specifics of the situation, we wouldn't want to um, say no, but we wouldn't really know, okay. know too much about it. Thank you. Yes, um, their hand up on um, why. Okay. Okay. Come back. Oh, did you were God, I just had another question. You want to answer one online? Yeah. We've got um okay. Jeanette um has her hand up. Maybe yeah. we can hear from Jeanette. Hello. Yes, this is Jeanette Fantone from All Four LLC in Virginia. <clears throat> I just had a question about uh, what was the reasoning behind adding the anaerobic digester processing? Um, why was that sector added? And is there an area of concern we should know about? Jeanette, I think it's it's somewhat of a. We could provide a bit more information probably in our response to comments. Um, certainly anaerobic digesters have become more common 
in Vermont than they used to be. Um, and while you know a lot of the facilities are contained, there are often you know it's an industrial process that um, poses the risk of stormwater contamination, um, as, as we had seen on a couple of um, at least one site that I think was proposed and, and has since been permitted. Um, there's another one I think that is permitted but hasn't been built yet. Um, but in terms of all the specifics, in terms of the pollutants, the exact pollutants and everything else, um, we can plan to address that through um, the public comment, which I think would be more beneficial than, and we'd be able to provide the, the details that perhaps you might be looking for. Okay, thank you. Uh, so the you, you said before that uh, total aluminum, total copper. What is going to be the changes and why for that? The changes to those were just the parameter limits. Correct. What is the new parameter limit? Okay. A lot of those changes were were likely made to be consistent with EPA's federal yeah. permit. Right. Um, probably speak to the exact changes. And it's, if it's something you just want to email me later, that's fine too. And we don't have, oh, we don't have the exact, I don't have the exact ones, but like it went from this to this, but we can. Drastic or just minimal? I don't recall. I don't think it's, I don't, I think it's a slight increase. Um, but I can definitely get slight increase or a slight decrease in the Illinois. I think we should check. Yeah, I'll check. Just, yeah. You. Any more general questions online? Uh, Robert. Hey, this is uh, Robert Aston with VHP out of South Burlington. Um, just had a question specifically about Sector J. Um, looks like it's been updated to kind of follow the um, 9020 construction general permit. Um, so if a facility obtained coverage via the MSGP, would they also need to go through 9020 or 90C or something like that? If the qualifying earth disturbance falls under the multi sector for removal of overburden, reclamation, and you follow in the new, uh, the new NOI is going to ask those questions, um, then you can get what we call an MSGP CGP combo, which would have some construction language in the authorization and it. Essentially, you follow the lower site handbook and other construction related documents to comply. Yeah, actually, I would just add that if, if you wouldn't qualify for construction general permit, like via the risk scoring that's in that for those types of activities um, at the Sector J facility, um, there, there would, you know, if you, for example, ended up in an individual construction permit. Um, that would be the only time that you would perhaps need that separate construction permit. Okay, understood. Uh, Jeanette? Um, one other question I have is uh, in regards to the no exposure certification, is this going to be on the same timeline as uh, submit, getting your renewal submitted? So would um, facilities with the no exposure need, um, would they have six months from the date of permit issuance to reapply for that certification? Yes. Okay. Thank you. One last call for general questions, and then we'll move on to the public comment stage. If anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand. 
I would add too, if somebody, you know, wanted to send us any general questions after the meeting, that's fine too. You can respond. Yeah. So the departments will accept public comment uh, through ENB or in writing by email or during the public meeting until July 12th. And then the final general permit may be appealed to the environmental court. Timing of reissuance is unknown. Uh, it's dependent on many factors, so there we cannot provide a update to when we expect it to be free issue. I think there's going to need to be some time for us to, you know, review everybody's comments, um, whether we receive them today or in writing. Um, and of course, we also consult internally. And um, if we determine that a change needs to be made or changes need to be made to the general permit, um, we would make those and, and then issue the final permit with a you know, with a formal document um, summarizing all the comments and the department's responses. Well, I will open the floor both online and in the room for any public comments. I'm in the room. On the team's call. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think that maybe this is the time to make this comment. And the forest products industry would be in a unique situation where our tests with total suspended solids show up with organic matter and environment, sawdust, and you know, tree branches and twigs and stuff. The machinery grinds it up in the yard all the years. And it becomes this really powdery, powdery substance that actually floats. So when we have um, a rain event, this stuff is the first stuff that tends to float on top. And like at our facility, we have to settle the pond that it comes into. And it does settle out. But I am concerned about the benchmark parameters on the total suspended solids in yards that deal with wood products or organic product because this is a phenomenon that's happened uh, for many many years the last time that we met which was 2017 and we discussed all this the board was going to look into that problem and that was like getting that back up the permits were just uh, administratively approved set set by the new permit that uh, were issued so i still have that concern it's very hard to make the total suspended solid solids benchmark in the entire industry. Yeah, I think that's I think it's a worthy comment and um it wasn't looked into last time, I think perhaps it, we should give it some additional consideration and understand it a little bit better. Maybe a little more consideration because benchmark control suspended solids is pretty long for this problem. You know, we'll definitely take this as a as a as a formal comment. Um, I think you know we're also um, required to be consistent with EPA's federal permit. So I think you know there's probably a little bit more understanding of the issue. That we would need to take in considering the comment um, whether it's talking to EPA or, or looking across state lines and, and seeing what other states are doing um, how it's being addressed and see where our where our benchmark is compared to EPA's um, to, to see where that is but we'll note the comment and um, consider it yeah Thank you. Um, my name is Dale Azaria, and I'm with Conservation Law Foundation. Um, and so first I want to start by um, 
uh, expressing our appreciation for a lot of the changes that you've proposed here, um, including the public posting and the electronic reporting, um, including the changes to corrective actions and the tiered responses. Um, I think that those things will help. Um, I did want to propose a few ways in which um, CLF thinks that this uh, general permit should should be strengthened or clarified. Um, and uh, I do plan to submit these in writing, but I just wanted to share them with you in advance today. Um, and the first one and something that I think is uh, really important is making sure that the general permit recognizes the changing climate that we're in and that the engineering practices that are reflected in um, each, um, each facility's SWIP uh, recognize increased extreme precipitation and what that means and how it affects stormwater runoff in particular. Um, the EPA permit has this in section 2.1.1.8 of that permit. Um, and I think that our CLF thinks that something like that um, would be um, appropriate and would just help clarify expectations and make sure that, that everyone is um, prepared. Second thing I wanted to comment on is um, benchmark monitoring, which um, as, as uh, we read the draft general permit is only required in the first year of operations, assuming assuming that the benchmark tests are all under the, or that the average of them is under the acceptable limit. Um, uh, it, it appears that it's written as like a one and done on that. And um, EPA requires testing in years one and four of their five-year permit. And uh, <clears throat> particularly, with a change in climate, we think that that makes sense to not just assume that what is uh, put in place and is good enough in 2025 is necessarily still going to be uh, adequate protection in 2028 or beyond. Um, we also think that DEC should consider some universal benchmarking. Um, you've got the benchmarking uh, levels sector by sector, but we think there are certain things, including pH, total suspended solid, and chemical oxygen demand um, at a minimum that should be required at all facilities. Um, and uh, in addition, that certain other things should be required um, for facilities that are um, discharging into impaired waters, including Lake Champlain with the TMDL for phosphorus, among other things. Um, uh, and then the uh, last set of comments I wanted to make was about the SWIPs. And uh, I know there was a question earlier about whether it's required to have an engineer prepare that. And um, I know the definition, the way it's written now, talks about a qualified person, um, but uh, we believe that it would be better to specify um, what education. It says that someone should have adequate education and adequate experience or appropriate. I can't remember exactly what the word is. We think it would be better to specify what the educational requirements are and how much experience uh, the person who's signing off on that SWIP has with stormwater management. For example, not that this is necessarily what Vermont needs to do, but uh, state of Connecticut is requiring a professional engineer with eight years of practice in stormwater management. Um, and the last one that I'd like to flag is that uh, we think the draft perm the draft general permit would be better if it clarified um, what the opportunities are for public review and comment of NOIs and um, uh, notices of exclusion and SWIPs. Um, I know that's set out by law, um, but we think that it would be useful to include it in the general permit as well so that everybody who's using this permit knows what's expected and understands what's going on. Um, we do have a few other comments that we'll just uh, include in our written submission, but thank you for your time.
Is there anybody else who has a comment that they would like to submit? Well, we appreciate everyone taking the time to join us today and to listen and provide excellent feedback and comments thus far. We welcome any more comments uh, directly to me or via the ENV. Um, and if you have trouble submitting via the ENV, feel free to reach out to myself. Um, I am very good with the ENV, and so I'm happy to help walk you through it. Um, last slide is just the our contact information. So again, I'm Ashley, I'm the SPD coordinator and the main contact. Um, and I just want to make sure that it's said that down the road, you know, when we do have a new permit issued, I will be there to help anybody who needs help, either with the SWIFT or the submittal or questions. Um, you're not going to be alone in that, the preparation. Um, so feel free to reach out to me along the way of your process. Help as much as I can. Um, and then we have Tom, who you can reach out to. He's my supervisor for the construction section and the industrial section. And then Kevin Burke, who is the stormwater program manager. And all of our contact information and email is on there. Um, this presentation will be available on our website. I do not know in what format. Um, sometimes we have to upload it to YouTube and provide a link, but it will be available um, as soon as possible after the end um, for public view. And they are available for any additional clarifying questions or to receive public comments after that. Well, Ashley, could you um, just given, you know, I know you work closely with the ENB, um, just explain sort of you know, how somebody could be subscribed so that they would yeah. see how the actions change. Yeah, I do have a presentation or a how to somewhere in the I can find, but essentially, so if you go to um, env.vermont.gov, that brings you to the general page of, you can see all permits that are on, or applications at that point, that are on public comments that are required to be um, on the Environmental Notice Bulletin or the ENB. You then, there's in the right-hand corner, there's a register button. So if you don't already have an account, I think that it's great to have one because you can follow any activity that you wish. It doesn't only have to be stormwater. Um, so you just register it for it and it's going to send you, it's just going to ask you for your name, email, and to create a password. It'll send you an email to verify your account. And then once you do that, there's a subscription button. And in the subscriptions, you can click anything that you want to know. So if you want to know all NOIs that come in in Chittenden County, you can set up that notification. And then every day, I think it's at 5 p.m., an email is going to be sent to your email that has a list of all of your activities that fall under what you've asked for. And then you can just click on them and go onto the EMB and view the documents um, and comment. There's always a comment button on all the activities. Um, yeah, and I think a lot of people maybe already follow the general permit, but you can you can do it at every level. You can follow the general permit level. So if you're interested in when the 9050 is going to be reissued, you can click on that and it'll send you it'll send you a notification when the 9050 is back on public notice. Um, and again if you need help with that I'm happy to give me a call. I'm happy to walk you through it as well. 
but it's a great opportunity if you have interest in your town. You know, I live in Moortown, so I can subscribe to all Moortown's projects. Or even just to subscribe to this multi system. Or to subscribe to this. Yeah. And so you, you have to follow the activity. So when you go into it and you find it, you have to hit follow. And then it's going to tell you the next, we're already in the published notice step. So the next step that it will send you a notification on is when it's issued. And then it'll say this activity has happened. And then on the EMB, there'll be the final permit and the response to comments that you can view right from there. And it's on there for 30 days because that is the appeal period. It's on there for the full 30 day appeal period. And then once that appeal period is done, it leaves the end. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So if there's no other comments or clarifying questions, we can uh, End the meeting. And again, thank you all for coming. Feel free to always reach out um, via email or telephone. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.